So this week's Facebook downtime got a lot of developers excited on why that happened, what's next, how that could be avoided and what really happened. I think a lot of developers don't even know that. So in this video, I want to tell you the list of things you as a developer should start at least reading about or knowing about, which will help you to transition from just a backend dev who knows how to write some basic node code to somebody who understands network a little bit decently as well. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so the very first thing I start with and that's what we have in full stack developer path on CodeDAM as well. And that's what I tell a lot of people that start with the HTTP fundamentals. Know about what protocol is in the first place. If you don't even know, protocol is just a way of communicating with a different computer or a different service, like a language for computer, a set of rules, but anyway, Coming back to HTTP, learn about what hypertext protocol is, a little bit details, how it works, what happens in this. And within this, you will learn about the next thing, which is IP addresses, like how computers on the internet and on intranet actually know about the presence of each other. Super important topic. It goes without saying, when you're looking about IP addresses, you're gonna come across port numbers, which is again, something which we do cover in the first course the web fundamentals on code dance learning path but if an ip address is something like 127001 then a port number is 1337 which is something you put after the colon in an ip address technically it means this, this thing but port number right here actually means an application in a list of long running applications on your computer, which is listening on a specific port number. That's that's the idea. One port number can only be occupied by one application, right? But you'll know more about this when you're looking into these details. The next thing you should know a little bit about is the DNS, how it works overall, but even more so, like you shouldn't just know about the definition of DNS, you should know about various record types, like what is an A record, what is a C name record, which are like, you know, two popular ones, TX record is basically just for storing information and I mean if you're a webmaster you would have seen some verification stuff and that but these two three records I mean MX record is also there not super important because it's like configure once and forget but these A and C and, M and TXT and stuff like this you might be playing a lot with your DNS settings and stuff like that learn about name servers and name servers record authoritative name servers, root name servers, learn about these things and this will actually come in the broader overview of DNS but these things right here this is something you would be working mostly on a day-to-day -day basis as well if you're a network administrator or somebody who's handling let's say you know custom domain configuration of a company or anything which requires translation of domain google.com to an ip address or some other service that will require dns with that you should also be aware about things which are cli related not only just for dns for example know about tools like nslookup how they work on a CLI level in order to extract various kinds of A record, MX record, TXT record, and so on. I mean, the online websites are fine, but this is literally just one command you have to learn about and a little bit of syntax. This is one, for example, the another thing which I would recommend in terms of networking, at least one which I use, I know of is LSOF which gives you access to the list of processes listening on port number 1337 on TCP. So learning about how you communicate or how you kill these processes or how you interact with these processes running on your system on a specific port number, specific IP address might be very beneficial because sometimes it might be possible that you have some port conflict. You are trying to run two processes on the same port or you are running it on a local host instead of broadcasting it over to your LAN IP address and stuff like this. So you should be aware about these things. What is the difference between 0.0, .0 and 127.001? These are actually two different networks, right? Something which works on this might not work on this, you know, vice versa. So you should be aware about these things. Another thing which comes to my mind is VPN and not in the sense of securing your identity and stuff like that. Sure, those softwares are good, but really understand what is the use case of VPN, how companies really use VPNs in their own networks. For example, at CodeDAM, what we do is we put our Lambda functions and our, not technically our database, our tech database is hosted on Atlas, but that Atlas is VPC peered. VPC we have on AWS. It's kind of like a VPC resource, which has some more Lambda, some EC2, which are able to access this resources, some Redis memcache, not memcache, just Redis, inside of a single 
VPC thing, which is a work, virtual private cloud without exposing it to internet. VPN, I actually wrote VPN. This should be VPN, VPC, basically virtual private cloud is what I meant. But yeah, this is also like important. Then if you want to go a little bit more into networking, you could learn about subnets, you know, route tables, for example, one of the things which you will encounter when you're setting up a VPC peering like we have on AWS, you will need to modify your route tables, you would have to work with subnets, how actually, you know, the classes of IPs work, IPv6 is also something which is interesting. But this is something which you probably would not need to worry a lot about until and unless you are deep into networking and doing some serious stuff. But as a developer, I would say at least learn about these many topics. DNS super important. IP address is very important. Port numbers, the CLI tools, NS lookup, what exactly is happening. Just know about what a record does what a CNAME does. If you are, if you have linked a domain, try to debug it via NSLOOKUP if that mapping really even exists or not. Learn about caching in DNS and how that happens and how you can invalidate that caching to a certain extent. So learn about these things. I mean, there is so much to learn and all I just see is people stuck on finding the shortest part between two points. So, I mean, if you're not interested in that, it's fine. There is a lot to learn in networking. There's a lot to learn in development. There's just too much work to be done. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Obviously, I did not go into details of all of these topics because that would have just stretched the video way too long, but we might be creating a bunch of videos covering these topics individually. So let me know below what your favorite topic is, what you have done so far. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching.